India and Guyana might be far away, but they are linked with each other, especially culturally. The Indian culture is celebrated a lot. Diwali, Holi are festivals where the leadership also takes part. With me is the Foreign Minister of Guyana to talk about this relationship. So welcome to Vion. My first question to you is an obvious one. How do you see this relationship going ahead? How do you characterize the relationship between the two countries? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me on your, on your channel. Um, Guyana and India, um, our history can be traced back um, even before independence, pol political independence, going back to indentureship. Um, but for the purposes of this interview, I would like to use our post-independence era. Uh, we have established relations with India. Um, when we became independent, politically independent, back in 1966. Um, and we have maintained that relations throughout the, the decades. And today, um, it is no, um, it is, I should say, it's, it's only, um, it's only fair to say that over the years of the relations, uh, we've been strengthening and deepening our cooperation. But I think that our oil and gas discovery would have um, enlarged our, mm -hmm. our, our visibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have been working very closely over the years, and India has been a very valuable partner and strategic partner to Guyana. Mm -hmm. um, and India, India has seen us through um, all of our challenges. And now that we're at a a critical juncture where the economy um, will expand exponentially. I think India is well positioned um, to assist Ghana in achieving its development goals. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned about the oil and gas sector. India has started to get uh, uh, the Ghanese oil. If you can give us the details, how much and what is the future when it comes to oil and gas sector between the two countries? Well, we have great potential in terms of our oil and gas sector, but we don't speak much about that. If you listen to His Excellency the President, Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, um, the Vice President, Dr. Bar Jagdio, and Cabinet Ministers, we focus on diversification. We focus on the fact that we have traditional sectors that have great potential and great sustainability for us because oil will, is a depleting resource. It will, it will dry up at some point. So for us, it's about having a development framework that will use the resources from oil and gas to diversify our traditional sectors that would allow us to have that sustainability going into the future. Mm -hmm. so, so for us, we see the oil and gas sector as giving great impetus to um, our transformation that we're on, on that agenda. And we've, we've carefully um, crafted our agenda. Uh, we have a lot of experience in government as a political party, um, and we have really transformed Guyana. When we assumed office, the People's Progressive Party Civic, in 1992, the first democratically held elections, we were a bankrupt nation, a hippie country. In 23 years, between 1992 and 2015, we were able to transform that economy into a middle-income economy. Mm -hmm. So before oil and gas, when we were poor, we were working towards transformation of the economy incrementally, and India was right by our side. Mm -hmm. um, and given the fact that India has been so good and so kind to Guyana through thick and thin, um, it makes for a very strong collaboration now that we're at a position. We will have the potential to expand infrastructurally um, in terms of our social sectors as well. India is well positioned to be able to partner with us and partnership is what is important for us. And, and what, what is interesting about this partnership is that India responds to our needs, mm -hmm. um, development needs, in a balanced way, mm -hmm. um, looking at all of the sectors and paying particular attention to the social pillars, which are really necessary to ensure that any country can really thrive and survive mm -hmm. in a very globalized environment. You mentioned earlier that even though we geographically disparate, um, we have we have close ties. But with globalization and the fact that the world is smaller now mm -hmm. through time and space, 
um, distanciation. We have closer ties to technological advancement and the fact that everything moves faster, it makes for a better uh, collaboration between Guyana and, and India. I was coming to that point, uh, the closer collaboration, uh, the visuals of your leadership, your president playing holy went viral here and uh, we have seen celebration of the Indian culture there. Uh, the Indian envoy also was present uh, uh, at that celebration. So uh, in terms of the Indian diaspora, the Indian connect uh, in terms of Indians who went uh, to your country uh, very uh, generations ago, the role they have played in your country in terms of its society, how do you see it as? Well, the, the indentured servants that left um, India um, to work in Guyana um, when we were a colony under the British rule um, went with their culture, um, a very rich centuries um, old culture, and they maintained it. Um, and that part, that forms part of our, our national culture and our, and our value system. Um, East Indians who, who left India and went to Guyana, um, that population today, um, in terms of the, the generational um, spread, amongst to about 39 to 40 percent of the population. Um, it's a significant um, share of the population and Indians in, or in, Indians or should, I should say Guyanese of Indian descent, um, they have contributed immensely to, to growth and development of Guyana and would have provided great leadership to the nation of Guyana. And that, that is not to say that the other races have not because we have six races in Guyana. Um, those of Afro descent as well, which makes up, uh, I think, just about 29% of the population. So we're a very plural society, and we are very tolerant of, of, of all of the religions and practices, because if you look at Holi, last Holi, mm -hmm. uh, President Ali is uh, a practicing Muslim. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Christian. Um, and we all participated. So we, we participate in these national events. It's part of our culture. We, we embrace it, we're very proud of it. And we demonstrated, um, we demonstrated in, a very, in, in a very explicit manner. And it's, it's a time for fun and for joy and for reflection. And it brings our, our peoples together and that is what we, we enjoy. And we have to thank uh, Mother India for that because that is what um, we would have um, we would have benefited from. Um, in some cases, and I've heard uh, the current High Commissioner to, of India Tagana mentions several times that if you look at the the Hindu culture in Ghana, in some cases it's uh, almost intact. Um, uh, versus in some um, segments here in India where some of the practices would have evolved. Um, if you go to Guyana, you'll find that they're centuries old, they're still intact. And I think that is a rich, um, a, a rich aspect of, of the Hindu culture um, in Guyana. Mm -hmm. The Hindu culture in Guyana, I mean, you've talked about it. Uh, there are celebrations as well. Uh, in a sense that uh, if you talk about disconnect, the people to people connect, how can this people to people connect between the two countries can be strengthened further? Well, it has to, it has to begin at the policy level. Um, at the level of, of government, um, I can tell you that the, relations, the relationship is very, very strong. Um, and we have paved the way in terms of our policy space to ensure that there's ease of travel, ease of doing business. Um, there, there are strong collaborations between Guyana and, and India at every level, healthcare, education, um, security, infrastructure. Um, so they, Guyana is open to the world and to India. Um, so there's, and, and we're a member of common, we're both part of the Commonwealth family. So in terms of access, there, there, there are really no bottlenecks or, or any challenges. Um, any Indian national who wishes to visit Guyana can go to our High Commission here mm. in, in Delhi. And the process is very seamless. Mm -hmm. um, we. Of course, we'd have to do a bit more in terms of promoting Guyana um, in the various cities here in, in India, uh, because we want to attract skills as well as capital. Um, and Guyana um, is looking to India 
not only as a regional leader, but also as a, as a global leader. And the partnership that we have at the bilateral level um, is very, very um, beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. uh, beneficial to you, but uh, coming back to the oil and gas sector, you started uh, the export to India. If you can give us little details as to the quantity that is being sent to India or perhaps in future as well, how much quantity can be sent to India in terms of your energy, in terms of the Guyanese crude oil? As it is, uh, what I'm aware of is that uh, India has purchased one million barrels. I am not sure uh, what are the projections for India. Um, and that is not within my remit, so I may not be able to give you the numbers mm -hmm. and the projections. Um, but what I can say is that um, with, with our crude or crude oil, mm -hmm. um, we obviously with our share, um, we'll be looking um, for markets. Um, and India is, is a very attractive market for us. Um, and that, that level of trade for us would be also very valuable because it helps us in terms of improving our trade statistics, which is beneficial to the people of Guyana as well as the people of India. Mm -hmm. um, talking about India, India has been an important development partner, not just for your country, but also for the Caribbean region as well. If we can talk about this development partnership uh, uh, with uh, India, the Guyana-India development partnership, and perhaps the wider CARICOM region as well. Yeah, there's a CARICOM-India um, dialogue. Um, I know that I was speaking with the foreign minister only recently and, and we are encouraged to ensure that we we continue um, the conversation on, on strengthening the relations between um, CARICOM and, and India. Um, for example, Trinidad and Tobago is another uh, CARICOM country that has um, a population um, that are uh, based on descendants of, of Indians as well, and they have the same practices like, like Guyana. Um, but aside from that, um, India, um, through to our colonial heritage, we, we have very strong ties. So there's a natural bond that, that, that we have. Um, so that makes it quite easier for us um, to be able to, to engage. Um, added to that, what is fundamental, fundamental to us in, in, in CARICOM is the fact that we uh, we are democratic nations, we believe in the rule of law, um, freedoms, um, we believe in peace and stability. The same values that, that the, the Indian people inculcate, um, and India is the largest democracy. Mm -hmm. um, so we have not only our colonial ties that would have brought us together naturally, well, not should say naturally, but um, by intervention, but also uh, moving forward as independent nations, we sought to strengthen um, the bonds, and we were able to look at those areas where we can actually collaborate um, and to work together closely. And we've done well um, as a region in terms of our relations with um, India. I rec recently also, um, well, when I met with the foreign minister, he also mentioned that he's in very close contact with our my other colleagues within CARICOM. So it shows that there's a lot of, of of a potential um, for us um, between uh, CARICOM and, and India and we will ensure that well as level, at the level of foreign ministers and I can also say at the level of the heads that we continue to work on, on strengthening those relations. Mm -hmm. But sir, specifically on development partnership with your country, India being involved in solar and power projects, in, in roads, infrastructure, if you can talk about that. Oh yeah, certainly. India is a, a, a very strong competitor globally. I mean, you've achieved a lot in terms of your development um, to the extent that you're able to partner with, with other nation states and, and, and like Guyana, um, we, we feel very, um, we're very pleased um, to have those level of collaboration. So for example, there's a road network project um, that India um, is working on the you know, pumps for irrigation, uh, which helps with our drainage uh, we get from India. We are expecting a, a ferry, a riverine ferry, which would carry passengers as well as cargo, which is due to be commissioned, I think, later this year. Mm -hmm. um, training um, of our university students. We have a, 
uh, gold project, uh, online project that um, is um, designed to train 20,000 Guyanese students within the next five years. This is between 2020 and 2025. That's the president's mandate. Um, two of your universities, Jane and as well as the Indira Gandhi University, are providing educational training um, to, to Guyanese citizens. So in the terms of tertiary level, as well as, um, as well, well, tertiary level education, not only undergraduate, but also postgraduate degrees and PhDs. So we're doing a lot of training in, 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 those, in, in those areas. And it's important for us because we want to be able to build our human capacity um, so that we can have a rich pool of human capital. And India is playing a very, very vital role in helping us to, to achieve that. So if you look at our development agenda, mm -hmm. India is actually contributing to every pillar within our development agenda, which would allow us to have balanced development. And that is very, very, very important. And it shows the strength of the Indian economy mm -hmm. and how they're able to contribute to development in other countries. And that is what um, is good for, for us as a, as, a, as a people. And it's also good for the people of, of, of India because it's, it's mutually beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, so my last question to you is um, the cricketing ties, cricketing relationship that has also helped uh, the two countries recently. Our ambassador uh, in uh, your country, Mr. Srinivas, also met a lot of uh, cricketers. So how do you see this as being uh, a connect between the two countries? It's, it's, uh, cricket is by itself uh, generates a lot of uh, partnerships and friendships um, and sports is a is a is a, a unifier um, to a large extent um, the people of Guyana love cricket it's the most popular sport mm -hmm. in in Guyana and so in, in India mm -hmm. um, and uh, Guyanese have benefit immensely mm -hmm. um, through the IPL and um, and we have now the and our CPL, which is the Caribbean version of the of the IPL, um, so the, there's a lot of activities in, in cricket and the innovation, bringing it to a level where it's very more exciting. You get results faster. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it's good for the region um, and it's good for um, the, the the sports diplomacy. I should say that's one aspect of it, but it's also good for. Um, the cultural integration because both nation states uh, love the same sport and we can benefit a lot um, from that from that from that activity so so cricket for us um, is is a very valuable sport and if you talk to citizens in Guyana they have stars here in India that they follow um, that, that they that they respect and, and that also they aspire to be um, so it's 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 very it's very good for for the cricketing the cricketing world. Mm -hmm. uh, and additionally, what kind of conversation you had with the Indian Prime Minister? We spoke about cricket. You spoke about cricket. Yes. Uh, yes. But he was asking. Uh, well, we spoke about cricket among other things, but um, I mentioned cricket because I was just speaking about cricket. Uh, he wanted to know who is our star cricketer now. Um, and I venture to mention Hetmyer or Hetmyer, um, who is playing in the IPL. Um, he is uh, probably uh, one of the most valuable um, Guyanese cricketers at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It was a pleasure talking to you, and uh, perhaps we will see more engagement between the two countries. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.